welcome. We have 75 um, minutes ish of vinyasa flow this morning. My name is Kelly. And um, for today's practice, if you'd like, you could have some props. Um, I might use the blocks throughout practice. You could have strap if you'd like. Um, I'm not necessarily going to call for it, but we will do some binding. So um, sometimes a strap can be easier or even just a scarf is fine to use. Um, so we're going to start out this morning in a comfortable seat. So you can sit on a cushion if you would like, or sit cross-legged, sit in hero's pose. doesn't matter. We're just going to take a couple of moments to settle in. So if you took my yin class on Friday, I was talking a little bit about balance in our bodies. So balancing the yin and the yang, the masculine, the feminine energy. So today, I want to focus on uh, more of the masculine energy within us. So that is um, more connected to the sun. So we're going to think about um, more fiery kind of flow today, um, which is why I called it the fire phoenix flow. So um, we're going to start out um, with a mudra. So this one's called Kali Mudra. So all you do is interlace all of your fingers and then just let your pointer finger um, stick out. So both pointer fingers stick out like this. Thumbs can stay crossed. And then you can bring that mudra right to your solar plexus. So this is Manipura Chakra. And this is kind of where our fire um, within our bodies lie. So you can think of the color yellow if you would like. And perhaps just close down the eyes for a moment, just to kind of center in. So as we move through our practice today, um, thinking of that element of fire, we're going to do some twists. We're going to be a little bit spicy. So know that as you're moving through your practice, um, everything is always optional in my yoga classes. You can always take a break, modify it as you need, take care of yourself. But if you'd like, we're going to do something that's called sto uh, stoking the Agni in our body. So the Agni, again, is that fire within our body. So that kind of stokes up our digestion helps us um, with elimination and get rid of toxins. So you can keep Kali Mudra um, at Manipura Chakra if you would like. We are gonna take a little breathing exercise to warm up, Kapalabhati breathing. And um, in our Core 26 class, we often breathe out of the mouth. But for today's practice to warm up, we're gonna keep the lips sealed and we're just gonna take the Kapalabhati breathing out of the nose. So we'll take a clearing breath together first. Inhale then through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale and release. Inhale in through the nose, seal the lips and begin. Just exhale. Continue on, just with the exhale, hugging the navel into the spine, stoking the fire. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale in through the nose, suspend the breath at the top. Exhale through the nose, suspend the breath at the bottom. Beautiful. And you can release the mudra, you can release the breath, just breathe in and out through the nose. So again, that breath is an energizing breath, kind of wakes everything up. Okay, so you can turn to the side and we're going to lie down onto our backs to warm up our hips a little bit. If you have the playlist queued up, now would be the time to start it. You can hold on behind the back of the thighs and then just gently roll yourself down onto your mat. Plant the feet down about hips width distance. So arms can just be down by the side or you can take one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly if you like. We're just gonna keep the knees pointed up for a moment and the feet planted. So because we're gonna be working on some twists today, I wanna make sure that we are um, connected into our core muscles. So you're feeling that hand on your belly, hugging your navel into your spine and kind of engaging the core. We're going to begin with just a little, another little breathing exercise with kind of a pelvic tilt. So as you inhale, I want you to let your pelvis tilt up towards the sky. So you think your tailbone maybe has like a pencil sticking out of it or a tail. 
point that tail up towards the sky, and you'll feel your lower back attached to the earth. And then as you inhale, release that and let that curve come back into your lumbar spine. So we're tilting it down now, yes. As you inhale, hug the navel into the spine, tilt the tailbone up. So this is a very small movement. And then as you exhale, let that relax. Again, you'll end up with that little space behind the lower back. One more time, as you inhale, hug the navel into the spine and press the lower back into the earth. This engages the core. And then as you inhale, release that. Beautiful. Hug your right knee into your chest and interlace the fingers around the shin. We're going to keep this left knee um, bent with the left foot planted to begin. So hug that right knee into the chest, just kind of warming up the front of the hip here. We're creating that little bit of compression. And you can stay exactly where you are, or if you'd like, kick that right leg up towards the sky. So you can hold on behind the back of the thigh here, and then just very gently begin to encourage that leg in towards the body. So we're starting to wake up the hamstring in the back of the leg. Flexing the toes towards the face will make it a little bit more intense. Just allowing this to happen early in practice, not feeling like you're having to pull or yank on anything. Bending into that right knee, hug the right knee back into the chest. We're going to let that left knee fall out away from the body. So we're coming into kind of that half butterfly pose. So the left knee is down towards the earth. We're opening the left hip. You can take the left hand and place it on the left hip if you'd like. We're going to find half happy baby. So keep the knee bent, but kick the right leg back up towards the sky. And you might hold on behind the back of the thigh, or you could reach up and hold on to the outside of the foot if you would like. So Arda Ananda Velasana, half happy baby. And again, you can encourage that right knee in towards that right armpit if you'd like, waking up the hips. Let's release the right foot and then let the right foot join the left. So now the soles of the feet are together. We're in Supta Baddha Konasana or reclined butterfly pose. So we're going to get into the shoulders here. So hold on to opposite elbows if you can, and let the arms come up over the top of the head for a moment. So just opening the chest, opening the shoulders. If you can't hold opposite elbow, you could always take cactus arms. We'll be finding that shape today as well. Beautiful. From here, release the elbows, reach the arms down to the outsides of the knees, and very gently encourage them to close. We're going to take the other side, so plant the right sole of the foot down, hug the left knee into the chest, and interlock the fingers around the front of the shin, or you can hold on behind the back of the thigh if you'd like. And just very gently creating that compression in the front of the hips. We're kind of squeezing out those hip flexors. We spend a lot of time in compression in the hip flexors, but we are creating a little bit of a healthy compression here, just kind of bringing blood flow there and warming things up. We release the fingers and we kick that left leg up towards the sky, holding on behind the back of the thigh this time, perhaps. Flexing the toes towards the face, you'll feel it along the back of the leg, especially the hamstring. Very gently encourage that leg in towards the body. And beginning to bend into that left knee. Again, let the right knee fall out to the side. So find that half butterfly pose. And then right hand can be onto the right hip to encourage it to stay down. Left hand either holds on behind the back of the thigh, or it can reach up and hold on to the outside of the foot. So half happy baby. Maybe you're feeling the differences between the left and right side. That's completely normal. Always okay to take a different variation of a shape on two different sides. So again, we're just warming up into the hips here. Just take a moment in half happy baby.
Releasing the left foot, and again, let the left foot join the right. So we're finding that Supta Baddha Konasana. Again, the option for the arms, maybe interlace the fingers around the opposite core or elbow this time. And let the arms come up over the top of the head. And gently keep the chin tucked into the chest here. A couple breaths. Releasing the bind of the arms, reach the arms down again to the outsides of the knees and gently encourage them close. Again, plant the soles of the feet onto the earth. We're gonna take one more motion here. So we're gonna take supine pigeon or supine figure four. So the right knee comes in towards the chest and then cross the right ankle over the left thigh. So we found that figure four shape in the legs. Arms are gonna come down by the sides. And again, you can flex those right toes if you'd like. You're pressing that right knee out and away from your body. You can take your right hand for a moment to feel that. We have the option to take this into pigeon bridge here. So take the arms down by the side, press the palms down, press into the left sole of the foot and lift the hips up any amount. So it might be a small motion here, otherwise you're lifting the hips up a little bit higher. Again, just allowing that right hip to externally rotate and open. And then slowly lowering down one vertebra at a time back onto the max. We'll have an option for a twist here. So the arms can stay, or arms come out away from the body, making a T-shape. The legs can stay exactly as they are, so you can keep this figure four shape. And then very gently begin to let the right sole of the foot come down onto the earth. So the right knee stays lifted up. If this doesn't work for you, just uncross the legs and take a normal supine twist with the knee stacked. Otherwise, again, the shape will get a little bit more into the outer hip. If you'd like to feel it a little bit more, you can take the left hand and again, press the right knee away from the body. You glance over the right fingertips. Taking the twist just a little deeper. We'll use a little bit of core strength to bring that shape back up through center. And then uncross that right leg. Let the right foot plant down and we'll take the other side. So arms come back down by the side. Cross the left ankle this time over the right side. Again, the left hand can come to the inside and press that left knee away from you, flexing the toes if you would like. And stretch it out with the pigeon bridge, bringing the arms down by the side, press the palms into the earth, press into the right foot and gently lift the hips up. Any amount, and again, this can be a very small movement. Doesn't have to be big here. And slowly letting that, the back come back down onto the earth, one vertebra at a time. Here we have the option for the twist. So taking the arms out from either side of the body, very gently letting that left sole of the foot come down to the right side of the body. So the left knee points up. Again, if this doesn't feel good in your body, uncross your legs and just have the stacked knees. Right hand this time can come to the inside of the left knee if you'd like to press it away. Maybe you glance over the left fingertips. Beautiful. Using a little bit of core strength, bring the shape back up through center, uncross the legs, and hug the knees into the chest for a moment. You can rock right and left on the spine, a little massage for the sacrum. And then begin to rock up and down the length of the spine. If that feels okay in your body, you can cross your ankles. Sometimes that kind of helps. And just take a couple of rocks here on the spine if that feels good. And eventually, as you're ready, we're going to rock up 
The feet can land onto the earth. You can adjust yourself if you like. We're gonna find both poses for a moment. So the toes and the heels can touch down onto the earth. You can lean back a little bit and reach the arms forward. Now we wanna engage the core here. So hug the navel into the spine and lift the chest up. You have the option here if you'd like to take it a little bit more intense to lift those legs up. So shins are parallel to the floor. And again, we're warming up our core here. Inhale here, imagine you're holding a big ball of fire. As you exhale, take that ball of fire over to your left. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, take it over to your right. So twisting here. Inhale through center. One more time. Exhale over to the left. Inhale through center. Exhale, take it over to the right. Beautiful. Inhale, come back through center. If you'd like, you could begin to straighten the legs. Again, waking up that core. And as you exhale, cross the legs. You can roll over the knees if you'd like, or just sit to the side. We're going to find a tabletop position. So our hands are underneath our shoulders, our knees are underneath our hips, spine is in neutral here. We'll take a couple rounds of cow and cat to warm up the spine. As you inhale, drop the belly, look up, tailbone up, cow pose. And then exhale, chin to chest, press the earth away, round the spine. Inhale, drop the belly, look up, tailbone up. And exhale, chin to chest, press the earth away, tilt the tailbone down, this is cat. Beautiful, continue on on your own breath through cat and cow. You can close your eyes and take any kind of movement that feels good in your body. Perhaps shaking the hips back and forth. Beautiful. Take one more round on your own breath, and then we'll meet in our neutral spine. Once you arrive there, let the knees come a little bit farther apart. Let the big toes touch. Let's sit back into child's pose for a moment. So Velasana, the hips come toward the heels. You can let the forehead rest down on the earth. Reach the arms forward here. So we're stretching out the sides of the body. We'll come right away into a tricep stretch. So bend into the elbows, place the hands, the palms together in prayer, and then see if you can bring that prayer to the back of your head. You can walk the elbows a little forward and then start to lean back a little bit. So this should stretch into this tricep. Take a couple breaths here. Beautiful yogis, releasing that tricep stretch, reach those arms forward again, crawl the fingertips forward, you can feel the stretch in the side body. Know the child's pose is always a great place to come to take a little rest if you need to, if things get overwhelming. Beautiful. As you inhale, let's rise back up to tabletop. So again, bringing the hands underneath the wrists. We're gonna take a little bit of circular motion here for to warm up the wrists. So just begin to stir your body around your wrists and your knees. And it doesn't matter which direction you go, we'll go both ways. So just kind of feel this out here, feel the pressure on each point in your hands. You feel how your wrists are feeling this morning. We wanna make sure that we take care of our wrists in our vinyasa flow practice, because we tend to use them. Making sure they're nice and warmed up. And know that if your wrists are ever an issue, being down on forearms instead is a good alternative. All right, let's gently stop in the center and take it back the other direction. And then we'll gently come to a stop in the center. We're going to warm up our shoulders just a little bit more here. As you inhale, lift your left arm up so that it's shoulder height. I don't want you to lift it any higher than that to begin. 
You can look at the fingers if you'd like. Inhale here. As you exhale, just give yourself a little hug here. You can look over to the right, maybe wrapping the fingers around the shoulder blade. Beautiful. Inhale, release the hand, take it back out to shoulder height. Again, you can look. And exhale, follow the hand over and give yourself a hug. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, reach the left arm up to shoulder high. As you exhale, this time we're going to take thread the needle. So take that left arm behind the right. You can come down onto the shoulder. Maybe the temple touches the earth. Now this right arm can reach forward if you would like. Or you can take the right arm around the back. Taking the back of the hand or to the back or maybe the hip. This is a half bind here. So thread the needle. Releasing that half bind, if you've taken it, bring the right hand back down onto the earth, press into it, and then lift the left arm up. Again, shoulder height to begin. If you're a little more open this time, you can let that left arm come up towards the sky, taking a little more opening. And then as you exhale, let the left hand come back down onto the earth. Beautiful. Readjust, and we'll take the other side. As you inhale, lift the right arm up, just shoulder height. Again, the eyes can look towards the right hand. As you exhale, hug underneath. The fingers hold on to the shoulder blade, and you can look up towards the sky. As you inhale, reach the right arm back out. Eyes can follow. And as you exhale, again, hug it underneath, maybe walking the fingers a little closer up towards the spine. Inhale, release, look up. And exhale, this time again we take thread the needle. So bring that right arm underneath the body, coming down onto the shoulder and the temple. Left hand could stay here to support, or you can reach your left fingertips forward. Also have the option to take the half bind. So taking the arm behind the body, the um, palm is up towards the sky, the back of the hand towards the body. It could be on the hip, or you could maybe even start to walk it up, just depending on how your shoulder feels this morning. Take your time. Beautiful. Releasing the left hand, place the left hand by the face, begin to lift up. Inhale, lift the right arm up, shoulder height, and then if it feels okay, you can open it up a little bit further. Give the eyes, follow the right arm up. And exhale, lower the right hand down. So back in our neutral tabletop, we'll take one round of cow and cat. As you inhale, drop the belly, look up, tailbone up. Exhale, chin to chest, press the earth away, round the spine. Coming back to our neutral spine, we're going to come into Adho Svanasana or Downward Facing Dog. So walk your hands, about one hand print forward and tuck your toes. Begin to lift your hips up, but keep your knees bent here. So press yourself back towards your thighs, then lengthen the tailbone up. Knees are still bent. Can you relax across the shoulder? Then begin to straighten your legs in the amount. Downward facing dog. Take a moment here to feel your first dog out, maybe bending into each opposite knee one at a time. Take your dog for a walk. The pressure in the hands, try to equalize it. Even use the pads of the fingers. Oftentimes we say to spread the fingers wide, but you can spread them kind of as wide as you'd like. You don't want that to hurt. You just want to try to equalize the pressure in the hands. Biceps should be mostly even with the triceps, or not, or ears should be with the uh, biceps. That's what I meant to say. Beautiful, and let's go ahead and come to our stillness here. So we're gonna take a stretch again for the shoulders. I'm gonna have you shorten your dog. So walk your feet a little bit farther forward and then put the pressure in the left hand. And if you can, take the right hand and reach somewhere onto the outside of the left leg. You can hold on outside of the calf or you can have it down the ankle. And then peek under your left shoulder and look up. We begin to pull a little bit to feel that stretch. 
We're releasing that. Let the right hand come back down onto the earth, and we'll take the other side. Lift the left hand up this time. Take it to the outside of the right leg somewhere. And again, you can peek underneath the right shoulder if that feels okay. Beautiful. Releasing that bind, let the hands come back down onto the earth. And then look forward, come up high onto the tippy toes and begin to walk yourself all the way to the top of your mat. Taking your time here. Once you arrive, feet are about hips width distance, bend into your knees. So this is Uttanasana or forward fold. Keeping the knees nice and bent for this first one. Stomach is on the thighs, maybe hands reach the earth, maybe not. You can find ragdoll pose if you would like, wrapping fingers around opposite elbows, rocking back and forth here. So we're allowing the hamstrings to warm up, take a little bit of time in your first forward fold. Eventually releasing the elbows, letting the fingertips touch down onto the mat. As you inhale, let your hands slide onto your shins and then begin to lift up into halfway lift or Ardha Uttanasana. So spine is lengthened here. I think the shoulders are coming right out of the hips. And then exhale, forward fold. Yes, knees should stay bent here. We're gonna take that two more times. As you inhale, slide the hands onto the shins, lengthen the spine. Beautiful, exhale and fold. One more time, Ardha Uttanasana, inhale, halfway lift. So the eyes can just be looking down, maybe at the top of the mat, try not to crank the neck here. Keep the neck in neutral. Beautiful, exhale, fold. Keep the head heavy here and the arms. One vertebra at a time, begin to rise up. Head arrives last. And then shrug the shoulders up by the ears and then drop them down away. So lengthening the sides of the neck. You can spin the palms forward towards me. We'll find Tadasana or Mountain Pose. Perhaps close your eyes for a moment. Just take a couple breaths here. So part of the reason I chose Kali Mudra at the beginning of class, Kali is a very fierce goddess. So she runs around and she has a uh, necklace that's made of skulls. And her whole purpose is to slay demons. So I like to invoke Kali as we're going through class. She helps to bring changes in our life um, in a good way. All right, you can let the eyes blink open. Let's warm up the shoulders. As you inhale, let the arms come forward and up, up over the top of the head. You can look up as you like. The palms stay forward, and then exhale, bring the arms down by the side. Beautiful. We'll take that motion again. As you inhale, reach the arms forward and up. You can look up if you'd like, and then exhale, let the arms come out to the side. One more time. Inhale, let the arms come forward and up. And then exhale, reach them down to the sides. Beautiful. We'll take that motion the other way this time. As you inhale, circle the arms out and then up. Connect the palms as you exhale, hands to heart center. Release the hands. Inhale, circle them up. Connect the palms. This time as you exhale, cactus the arms. Take a nice back bend here. See if you can squeeze the shoulder blades together, lengthen the collarbones. Beautiful. Inhale, reach the arms up. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful. We're gonna take some sun breaths here. Release the arms down. And then as you inhale, circle them up, look up. And as you exhale, hands through heart center, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, lengthen the spine. Exhale and fold. Now keep the head and the arms heavy here. Begin to roll yourself up. We have a change this time. As your shoulders rise up, 
I want you to begin to bend into your elbows and start to lift just your elbows up. So head stays down for a moment here. Imagine you're like a marionette doll. So you have um, strings attached to your elbows. They lift up as high as they can. Then the chin begins to lift up, flip the palms forward. So we come into our cactus arms, take a gentle back bend. Beautiful, and then look up, connect the palms. Exhale, hands to heart center. We're gonna rise up like that a couple of times today. Release the arms down. Inhale, circle them up, look up. Exhale, hands through heart center, forward fold. Beautiful. As you inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale and fold. Beautiful, as you inhale again, keep the head heavy. Keep the arms heavy at first. Begin to roll up one vertebra at a time. I'm showing you from the side this time. As the shoulders come over the hips, that's when you bend into the elbows and begin to lift the elbows up. Let them come up as high as they can and then flip the palms forward and find your cactus. You can take a gentle back bend. And then let the arms come all the way up, looking up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful. We'll do that one more time. Release the arms down and then inhale, reach them up. This time as you'd like, exhale, swan dive down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale and fold. One more time, rising up like that. Keep the head heavy. One vertebra at a time, begin to come up. Shoulders over the hips and then lift those elbows up high. This will be different for everyone. For everyone. And then flip the palms forward. Again, find cactus. Take a gentle back bend here. Beautiful, reaching the arms all the way up. Connect the palms. Exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful yogis, we'll warm up the hips now. Release the arms down by the side and inhale, reach them up. As you exhale, swan dive down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, let the hands come down onto the earth. Beautiful. Take your right hand and place it in front of your face on the earth and bend deeply into your right knee. Take your left hand onto your left hip, and then begin to turn the left elbow towards the sky, and then the gaze comes towards the sky. So take a twist. You can let the left fingertips reach up if that's okay in your body. Inhale here. And as you exhale, slowly bring the left hand down, straighten the legs, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant the hands, step the left foot all the way to the back of the mat. So we have supported high lunge here. And know that if you have blocks, you can have blocks underneath your hands. Again, we're warming up our hips. So bend into that right knee as you inhale, bring the chest forward. As you exhale, straighten your legs, find a fold here. Beautiful. We're gonna move this, bringing glide into the hips. So bend into the right knee, inhale, chest forward, look forward. Exhale, straighten those legs, any amount, and fold. Beautiful, one more time, re-bend into that right knee, chest comes forward. And exhale, straighten the legs. This is a modified pyramid pose. That left heel could be lifted quite high. You know, you can always have micro bends in your knees. So re-bend into your right knee, bring your chest forward. And then step the left foot up to meet the right, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha. Exhale and fold. Beautiful. This time, bend into the left knee and place the left hand in front of the face on the earth. Right hand onto the right hip and then turn that right elbow towards the sky. Now the gaze can follow. You can look up. Option to reach the right arm up towards the sky, opening the chest. Inhale here, and as you exhale, back to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha. Exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot to the back of the mat this time. Again, supported high lunge, so hands could be on blocks here or not. Warming up the left hip, bend into that left knee, bring the chest forward, inhale. As you exhale, straighten those legs, find a fold. 
We're moving this again, bend into that left knee, chest comes forward. And exhale, straighten the legs. You can get some dynamic movement here to warm up the body. Bend back into that left knee, look forward, chest forward, inhale. As you exhale, straighten the legs and fold. Again, that right heel can be lifted quite high here. Yogis, re-bend into that left knee, look forward. Step your right foot up to meet your left, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Beautiful, exhale and fold. Plant your hands, this time we step both feet to the back of the mat. So we found our first high plank. So our wrists are underneath our shoulders. Our heels are right on top of our toes here and our navel is into the spine. Know that if this, this is too much, you can always bring your knees down onto the mat for support. Otherwise, see if you can puff up in between the shoulder blades a little bit. And then again, hug that navel into the spine. Inhale here. As you exhale, lift your hips up high, downward facing dog. Again, move it out for a moment here if you would like. And then eventually finding your stillness in your downward facing dog. Going to warm up again the spine a little bit here. As you inhale like a wave, bring yourself all the way forward into high plank. And then exhale, lift your hips up high, downward facing dog. Beautiful. We're going to do that two more times. As you inhale, articulate through the spine and come forward into high plank. Take your time. And then exhale, hips come up high, downward facing dog. One more time, inhale, come forward, high plank. Beautiful, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward, come up high onto the toes, tip top to the, tip toe to the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale and fold. Keeping the head heavy, roll up. We're gonna take the elbows high, same variation. Begin to lift the elbows as you rise up. Find your cactus arms, take a gentle back bend here. And then arms come all the way up, connect the palms, exhale, hands to heart center. Some variations of Surya Namaskar A or Sun A. Release the arms down, inhale, reach them up. As you exhale, swan dive down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the hands, step the feet back, find downward facing dog. Take an inhale here, in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale and release. As you inhale, roll forward, find high plate. This time, knees come down onto the mat, untuck the toes, bend into the elbows, keep them in close to the ribs and lower all the way down onto the belly. Now hands are underneath these shoulders for the first variation, we're gonna find cobra pose. Press your feet down onto the earth and as you inhale, eyes lift up, head, neck and shoulders lift, cobra pose. Keep the elbows hugging in. Beautiful, exhale, slower down. We'll do that two more times. As you inhale, Bhujangasana, rise up, Cobra Pose. And exhale, slowly lower down. One more time. As you inhale, lift up, Cobra Pose. Keep the collarbones wide here. And exhale, slowly lower down. Beautiful, press into the hands. We'll come back through tabletop. And then tuck the toes, lift the hips up high. Downward facing dog. Inhale here. Open mouth, exhale, release. Inhale, look forward, tiptoe to the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale and fold. Begin that arm variation, roll yourself up, keep the arms heavy. As the shoulders come over the hips, begin to lift those elbows up and then flip the palms forward, find cactus arms, take that back bend. And then connect the palms up over the top of the head, exhale, hands to heart center. Release the arms down and then inhale, circle them up. 
As you exhale, swan dive down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the hands. This time, step right back to high plank. Now this time, it's up to you. Knees can be up or down. As you inhale, roll forward. As you exhale, bend into the elbows. Keep the elbows in close to the side. Bodies like a plank of wood. Chaturanga Dandasana, all the way down to the belly. And then release down onto the mat. So flip the toes over. For this variation, we're going to reach the arms out in front of us. So kind of like Superman arms. Let the forehead touch down onto the earth. Some variations of locust pose. As you inhale here, lift your left leg and right arm up off of the earth. The forehead can lift up too if you'd like. And then exhale, lower down. So we'll do the other side. Right leg, left arm lifts up. And then exhale, slowly lower down. Yes, this time just both arms together. So keep the feet down. As you inhale, lift both arms up. Maybe the head comes up as well. And then exhale, slowly lower down. Bend into the elbows and bring them out to cactus arms. We found the shape before. We're gonna stay here just for a moment. You can maybe feel this in the pec muscles here in the chest. Beautiful. And then we'll begin to swim the arms around behind you. Now, if you can, you can interlace the fingers here, pressing the palms together. If that's not accessible for you, then the arms can just reach back with the palms facing one another. Yes. And then as you inhale, slowly begin to lift up. We'll lift the arms up, the head up, and then you have the option to lift the legs up as well. So this is locust pose. Take a breath here. And then exhale, slowly lower down, release the bind, place the hands back underneath the shoulders, press yourself up, tabletop, tuck your toes, lift your hips up high, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Inhale, look forward, prepare. Walk, step, or jump to the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, and fold. Last time like this, slowly roll yourself up. Again, keep the arms heavy, and then begin to lift the elbows up. Flip the palms forward, find the cactus, maybe deepen the back bends, and then reach the arms up, connect the palms, exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful, one more round, release the arms down, inhale, circle them up. As you exhale, swan dive down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the hands, step right back to high plank. Again, it's your option here, knees are up or down. As you inhale, roll forward. As you exhale, maybe lower halfway or all the way to belly. Chaturanga Dandasana, find your back bend. Flip the toes, either find cobra or up dog, or perhaps you like locusts. And then as you exhale, lift your hips up high, downward facing dog. Take a breath in your down dog. Inhale in through the nose. Open the mouth. Exhale and release. Inhale, look forward, prepare. Bend into those knees as you exhale, hop forward or step forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. As you inhale, this time root to rise. Arms reach up over the top of the head. And exhale, hands to heart center. This is Samasthiti. Beautiful. Bringing a little bit of heat into the practice. Feet can be together here, or you can have them hips width distance. It's up to you. We're going to find Utkatasana or chair pose. Begin to bend into the knees and sit the hips down. Now for today's practice, instead of reaching the arms forward, I'm gonna have you reach them out to the side and back a little bit. So kind of think airplane arms. Spread the fingers wide here. So taking some different motions for the shoulders. Bend into those knees, bring the weight into the heels. Inhale, reach the fingertips away from one another. As you exhale, just spin the palms to the back of your space. Yes, and then inhale, bring the palms back forward. And exhale, spin the palms back. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, spin the palms forward. 
And exhale, spin the palms back. Beautiful. Inhale, spin the palms forward. Now bring the arms forward, reach. We're gonna take a twist. As you exhale, right arm forward, bring the left arm back. You can look back if you'd like. Inhale, reach forward. And exhale, other side, left arm forward, right arm back. Inhale, reach forward. As you exhale, this time airplane the arms. Find half chair, bring the chest almost down to the thighs. Hips come back. And then forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Step your left foot to the back of the mat. Again, we're in our high supported lunge. Bend a little bit deeper into that right knee. One time this time. Inhale, reach forward, look forward. As you exhale, straighten that front leg, modify here. Beautiful. Rebend into that right knee, come forward. We're going to take a twist. Left hand down, reach your right arm up. Easy twist. Hug that right knee in towards the center line. Beautiful. We're gonna take some arm motions here as you inhale, reach up. As you exhale, bring your right arm down and just give your right leg a hug. Beautiful. Inhale, reach it up. And exhale, hug it in. One more time. Inhale, reach it up. And exhale, hug it in. Inhale, reach it up. As you exhale, bring the right hand down and then scissor hug the legs together. Inhale, rise up. We find high crescent warrior. So bend deeply into that right knee. You can have a little bend in that left knee to tilt the tailbone down and engage the core. And then try to press the back of the left knee up towards the sky. Inhale here. You have the option here to find that Kali Mudra. So bringing the palms together, pointer fingers sticking out. Reach up, and then as you exhale, arms come down like you're pointing forward. And then we're gonna find warrior two. So imagine you're drawing an arrow back in a bow, turn your left heel down, and then reach the arms out long. Warrior two. So bend deeply into that right knee. Left knife edge of the foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat. Glance down the right fingertips. Beautiful, bringing some movement in here. As you inhale, straighten the legs, arms up, look up, flying warrior. And exhale, soften down, warrior two. Inhale, straighten the legs, arms up, look up, flying warrior. And exhale, soften down, warrior two. One more time, inhale, reach up, flying warrior. And as you exhale, soften down, warrior two. Flip the front palm, left hand down the left leg or left hip, reach the right fingertips up. This is called reversing the warrior or also called peaceful warrior. So the stretch in the right side body as you inhale. And then as you exhale, we find side angle. Parsvo Konasana. Bring the right forearm onto the right thigh. Lift the left fingertips up. We're going to circle the left wrist here. So take the left hand and reach it towards the back of your space. Down, forward, bicep frames the ear, and then reach it up. Do that two more times. Back. Down, forward, and up. And one more time, back, down, forward, and up. Beautiful, as you inhale, rise up, warrior two. And then straighten that front leg, turn your heels in, toes out. So you're facing the side of the mat this time. Hands come to heart center, begin to bend into your knees. So we're finding goddess pose here. So bring a little bit of movement into the hips back and forth. We'll take the hands onto the thighs and then see if you can keep your collarbones wide here. Beautiful. As you inhale, lift your chest up. As you exhale, drop your left shoulder down, look over your right. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, other side, right shoulder down, look over your left. Inhale, come back up through center. As you exhale, sink just a little bit deeper into your goddess pose. And then hands come down onto the mat, begin to straighten the legs. Keep the hands down onto the earth, underneath the shoulders, and then very gently just bend into your right knee. Come back to center, bend into your left knee. So we're taking it a little bit deeper into the hips, just back and forth a couple of times. I call this high skater, it's also called surfer. 
Beautiful. Come back to center. Inhale, halfway lift. Look at your right toes and bring your hands to frame your right toes. Turn your left heel up. We're going to step the right foot back to meet the left. We're in our high plank. We have the option here to take a vinyasa or just meet in down dog. If you take your vinyasa, come forward, inhale. As you exhale, lower halfway or all the way to belly. As you inhale, your variation of back bend, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath here in your downward facing dog. Again, always optional to take your vinyasas. You can always just meet us in down dog. Beautiful. Inhale, look forward, prepare. Walk, step, or jump to the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, root to rise. Arms up over the top of the head. And exhale, hands to heart center. Samasiti. Again, we find Utkatasana, chair pose. So bend into those knees, bring the hips down. And again, inhale, reach the arms out. This time we'll find cactus arms. So find your cactus arms, keep your collarbones wide, sit down into those heels. Yes. Inhale, exhale, sit in just a little bit deeper. We're gonna find a twist this time, bring the palms together at the heart center this time. Inhale, reach the chest up. As you exhale, twist to the left, right elbow, left knee. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, twist it the other way, left elbow, right knee. Beautiful. Inhale, come back through center, reach the arms forward for a moment. And then as you exhale again, airplane the arms, find half chair. Bring yourself down just a little bit lower. And then forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Step the right foot all the way to the back of the mat. Again, we find our supported high lunge. Locks underneath the hands are fine. As you inhale, chest comes forward, look forward. As you exhale, straighten your legs, modify pyramid pose. Rebend into that left knee. Inhale, chest comes forward. We find easy twists. Right hand down, reach that left arm up. We'll hug the left knee in towards the center line. Inhale here. As you exhale, left arm hugs the left thigh. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, give yourself a hug. We'll inhale, reach up. And exhale, hug it in. One more time. Inhale, reach up. And as you exhale, left hand comes down. Now, since you hug your legs together for stability, your hands can come onto your thighs. We're going to rise up into our high crescent warrior. So spin the pinky fingers to face one another for a moment. Bend into your back knee so you can engage the core. Then start to straighten that back leg, pressing the back of your right knee up towards the sky. Bend a little bit deeper into that left knee. And again, we have the option to find Kali Mudra if we'd like. So interlace the fingers. The pointer fingers are sticking out. Inhale here. As you exhale, bring the arms down parallel to the floor. And then imagine that arrow being pulled back into the bow. So release the fingers, pull the right arm back, turn the right heel down. And then the arms reach out parallel. We found warrior two. So the knife edge of the right foot parallel to the short edge of the mat. Nice deep bend in the left knee. Look down the left fingertips. Let's move this. Inhale, straighten the legs, arms up, look up, flying warrior. And then exhale, soften down, warrior two. Inhale, flying warrior. And exhale, soften down, warrior two. One more time. Inhale, flying warrior. And exhale, soften down, warrior two. We find peaceful warrior or reverse. Flip the front palm, right hand, right hip, or right thigh. Lift the left arm up. Peaceful warrior. Inhale here into the left side body. And as you exhale, side angle, left forearm onto the left thigh, right arm reaching up towards 12 o'clock. Do that nice bend in that left knee. It hasn't changed since warrior two. Taking that arm circle, right fingers come back towards the back of your space. Down, forward, bicep frames the ear, and then reach up. Two more times, right arm back. Down, forward, and up. Final time. Back. Down. Forward. 
forward and up. Inhale, use your core, rise up, warrior two. And again, straighten the legs, heels in, toes out, hands come to heart center. Bend into those knees, goddess squat. Now from here, the hands can come down onto the earth, you can straighten the legs. And again, we're gonna bring some movement into those knees and hips. If Skandasana is in your practice, feel free to come all the way down. The heel can be lifted or on the earth, hands down or up. Take it back and forth a couple of times. Again, we're just bringing movement and fire into the hips. Beautiful, and then go ahead and stop into the center. Once you've done an equal amount, hands underneath the shoulders, halfway lift. Look at your, your left toes, walk your hands to frame your left foot, turn your right heel up. Step the left foot back to meet the right. You can find down dog or take your variation of a vinyasa. Once you reach down dog, nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, and release. Beautiful. Bring the knees down wide onto the mat, big toe touch. Find child's pose for a couple of breaths here, just to release for a moment. yogis. As you're ready, press into your hands, tuck your toes, lift your hips up high, downward facing dog. Bring the left foot in towards the center line. As you inhale, lift the right leg up. Imagine you're being pulled by the back of the right leg, heel towards the sky. Inhale. As you exhale, look forward, hug the right knee in, and then step it forward. The right hand can always help it to step forward if it needs. This time we're gonna bring the left knee down and untuck the toes. So this is supported low lunge. As you inhale, bring your chest forward. So we're compressing that right hip, but we're lengthening out the front of the left hip flexor. Beautiful. As you exhale, bring your forehead towards your shin and then begin to straighten your front leg, walking the hands back. So this is Ardha Hanunasana or half monkey split. Look back, see if you can hide your left foot behind your left thigh. You can flex the right toes in towards the face if that feels okay in your body. Beautiful. And then re-bend into your right knee. Walk your hands forward. Again, you can walk your hands up onto your thigh, or you can just reach your arms up. So this is Anjane Asana. Inhale here. As you exhale, let's cactus the arms. And again, take that gentle back bend. Beautiful, inhale, reach up. As you exhale, bring your hands down to frame that front foot. Now we're gonna to start to toe heel that right foot across towards your left um, wrist. And then let that right knee come down onto the earth. I want you to take your time here. So we're coming in towards a pigeon-ish shape in the front. Lean over onto your right thigh for a moment and then let the left knee come forward. So we've actually found our 90-90 or our deer legs. So I'm going to turn forward to show you this. So we have this shape in our body. And the, your left knee can be pretty far away from your right instep if you'd like. It's up to you. And then as you inhale, reach your arms up. We're going to twist. It doesn't matter which way you go first. As you exhale, twist over the bent knees. And inhale, come back to center, and exhale, twist it the other direction. Beautiful. Inhale, come back to center. And exhale, twist. One more time. Inhale, come back to center. You can bring the hands down behind you or try to keep them lifted up. Lean over onto your right hip and bring your legs forward, and we found boat pose again, Navasana. Again, the hands can hold on behind the back of the thighs or you can touch your toes down. Inhale, reach up. Beautiful. And as you exhale, hug everything in. You can cross the ankles. 
Step the feet back, find your high plank. You can take a vinyasa, or we can just meet in downward facing dog. Little yogis, one more side. Bring the right foot in towards the center line, and then inhale, lift the left leg up. Imagine you're being pulled up from the back of your leg. Flex the left toes, three-legged dog. Inhale here, as you exhale, look forward, hug your knee in, create space. Step your left foot forward. Again, the left hand can help here. Right knee comes down, untuck the toes, supported low lunge. Again, we're compressing into the front of this left hip, but we might feel it more in the stretch of the right, front of the right hip. Inhale here. As you exhale, bring your forehead close to your shin, and then begin to straighten your front leg. So we're walking back towards half monkey splits. You can walk the hands back. Flexing left toes in towards the face. And again, when it's back, I can see my right toes, so I'm gonna move them a little bit. So they're hidden behind my right thigh. Beautiful. I rebend into my left knee as I inhale, come forward. And again, you can use your hands to crawl up onto the thigh or just reach your arms up to find Anjana Asana. Send the pinky fingers to face one another. This time, if you'd like, you could find Kali Mudra one last time. Inhale, reach it up, and exhale if you'd like. Take a little bit of a back bend here. Maybe bend just a little bit more into that left knee. Again, you can find the cactus arms if you would prefer. Inhale. As you exhale, hands come down to frame that front foot. And then again, begin to toe heel that left foot across. Let that left knee come out very carefully. That shin is down parallel to the short edge of the mat. Come over onto your left hip and then bring that right knee in. So again, we found 90 90 in the legs. So I'm going to turn around and mirror you. So again, find what works for you. They could be a little bit farther away from one another or a little bit closer. Depends on what you would like in your hips. So stretch for the outer hips. As you inhale, reach the arms out. And again, we're going to twist it as you exhale, twist. Inhale, come back to center. And exhale, take a twist. Beautiful. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, twist. One more time. Inhale, come back to center. And exhale, twist. Beautiful. Inhale, come back to center. So the hands can come behind the body or you can keep the arms out. Lean over onto your left hip and see if you can kick your right leg forward to find boat pose, Navasana. You can adjust as you need. So options here to have the toes down, holding on behind the back. Or if you'd like that last core challenge, maybe you reach everything long. Inhale. As you exhale, hug the knees into the chest. And again, you can roll over the knees. Maybe you shoot the legs back. Maybe you just step back. You could find down dog or find your final thing up here. Once you reach down dog, nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale and release. Inhale, look forward, come up high onto the toes or come onto our seat. So you can just bring your knees down and sit. Or you could perhaps jump through to find your seat. Beautiful. And from here, just let your legs come out long onto the mat. So we're going to find the dasana or staff pose. So you can remove the extra flesh away from the sits bones. You could sit on the edge of a blanket here if you would like. Bring your hands down near the sides of your hips and slowly begin to lift your chest up. So try to keep the collarbones wide here. Yeah, chins parallel to the floor. So we're lengthening the entire spine up. Well, keeping your length, inhale, maybe your arms reach up. And then exhale, begin to hinge your body forward. Try to keep your spine lengthened at first. When you can no longer keep it lengthened, then tuck your chin into your chest and find a fold. This is Hashimotanasana, or also called caterpillar pose. You can find the hands onto the feet if that feels good for you. Maybe a little bend into the elbows. It stretches out the back of the legs.
Simple. Releasing that. Bend into your knees. And hug your knees into your chest for a moment. Just tuck your chin into your chest. This is called quiet pose. yogis and then holding on behind the back of the thighs begin to roll yourself down onto the mat for a moment just let the feet come out a little bit wider and let the knees tent in or let the knees kiss maybe you cactus the arms down by the side or reach the arms up over the top of the head and find a diamond shape just take a couple breaths here there's been a lot of hip opening today so we're just allowing those hips to kind of neutralize. Well, just taking a little stretch for the outer hips now. Let the arms come out to either side and then very gently, one knee at a time, let it fall into the center and the other one falls to the side. So kind of finding that windshield wipe action. And you can widen the feet a little bit here if you'd like. And eventually let the knees land off to the left side of the mat so the legs could stay staggered or if you prefer you could stack the knees on top of one another taking one final twist today if your legs have stayed staggered you can always take the knife edge of the left foot to the outside of the right knee and a lot of times you'll feel that a little bit deeper into that right hip Release that. If you took it, knees come back to center and then let the knees fall off to the right. Again, maybe a different variation on this side. A little deeper into the outer hip, take the right knife edge of the foot to the outside of the left knee. To encourage it down, you might be feeling it right here. Releasing the foot, bring the knees back to center, and then very gently hug the knees into the chest. You can take any final movements here that you would like, perhaps you'd like a flower pose, anything else that you need to complete your practice. Once you feel complete, curl yourself into a little ball here. Give yourself a little hug. Take a nice deep breath in. And then as you exhale, release everything down onto the mat to find your final Shavasana. Taking a couple of breaths here for yourself, a little bit of time just to allow your practice, the benefits to sink in. So a little bit of fire, we were stoking today. You might feel you have a little bit of energy. Again, as you're relaxing, perhaps bringing focus to Manipura Chakra, the solar plexus chakra. Imagine the color yellow, like a bright yellow sun. Perhaps you'd like to imagine Kali, a goddess that brings change into our lives and helps us to slay demons. So invoking Kali in our lives often is, um, we do that for a change or a big change. So I have a little reading for you as you relax in your final Shavasana. This one's from Journey to the Heart by Melody B, one of my favorite books. So this one is called Change is in the Air. Just as the world around us changes and evolves, so do the circumstances and situations in our lives. We live in a universe that is alive, vibrant, and constantly evolving. Change is the way nature the universe and the divine move us through each period of our lives and into destiny. We are led to our next lesson, our next adventure. There is no need to deny change, to fear it or fight against it. Change is inevitable. Just as the earth is constant motion and transformation, so are we. Take your place in the universal dance, the universal rhythm. Allow change to happen. Work with it as your life unfolds. Sometimes change comes in one smashing moment like a volcanic eruption. Other times it happens more slowly the way the winds and rain sculpt bridges out of canyons. Learn to trust your body, its signs, signals, warnings, and excited proclamations. 
We let the gathering clouds warn us of impending storms, and we learn to study and predict tremors in the earth. In much the same way, our body can function as a barometer for our soul and its place in the constantly changing and evolving universe. You are open now, more sensitive than you've been before. Change is coming, it's here. You can feel it in the air, you can feel it in yourself. Thank your body for helping you. Thank the universe for what it is about to do. Then thank your higher power because change will bring you closer to love. Yogins, feel free to relax in your final Shavasana for a little bit longer if that's what you would like. If you'd like to be led out of your practice, begin to bring movement into the body, perhaps wiggling the fingers and the toes, eventually taking that nice full body stretch, reaching the arms up over the top of the head. And then eventually let's roll over onto our right sides today. So our right sides are, are more young, are more masculine, are more fire sides. Use your bicep as your pillow in fetal position for a moment. And then as you're ready, pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat, and we'll close out our practice together. And again, I invite you, if you would like to find Kali Mudra, know that mudras are always optional. So again, interlacing the fingers and then letting the index or pointer finger go, keeping the thumbs crossed. Let's again bring that to Manipura, or our solar plexus chakra. Close the eyes. Perhaps you envision Kali, that fierce goddess, wearing that necklace of skulls of the demons that she slayed. Beautiful yogis, I hope that this practice will give you energy and fire through your day. The light and love in me sees and honors the light and love in each and every single one of you. Namaste.